Greetings, everyone. <clears throat> yeah, so Sherry and I went to uh, stand up last night. Um, a, little, a little bit for her birthday. She's got a birthday coming up. And uh, uh, there's this guy. Uh, you can look him up yourself. ChadComedy.com. And I'm not going to put a link. So, But um, he, was, he, was, he was doing a bit about... Okay, so sometimes I heckle. <laughs> Mostly because I get bored with the comics, and last night was, like, terrible. Like, there was this one girl that, her, she, her like, name was Christiana. That was the most interesting thing about her. And Oh, gosh, she just went on and on, and then her, her big punchline was that she wished she got molested, she, and she wasn't pretty enough to get molested. I'm like, okay, join the crowd. So, but it was, it was like a really, it was like an augmented... Uh, I don't know. It was like, who is available for an open mic, but we'll call it a show. So, but that's, I'll blame that on Josh. Josh, Josh needs to be a little more picky about a show than just an open mic. So, uh, cause I think the show is only once a month. So it's like, come on, dude, you can do better. But, um, uh, Chad was talking about some dude, uh, fucking a cantaloupe and, uh, the guy told him, he says, put it in there, put it in the microwave for six seconds. And it's, and his, basically his punchline was that, you know, like that's a very specific number. Like it, it took some trial and error to figure that one out. And, and then, uh, it dawned on me. I'm like, he, I, he didn't quite ask the audience a question or something like that. But then I yelled out, I'm like, well, dummy, you're supposed to use a condom. And he's like, what? And I go, well, you want to keep the seeds out of your pee hole. And so and I was, I remember, um, there was some girl was talking about how some dude fucked her in the butthole and she had eaten like nachos or something the day before and he got a jalapeno seed stuck in his pee hole and then got all infected. <laughs> Wear a condom. Jesus Christ, you fucking young people. AIDS don't even scare you no more. Fucking motherfuckers. Animals. So uh, there is a third... Uh, category of a third choice which is called car stereo review and they are out of business as well and if you if you can read there it says they are the mobile electronics authority they are the authority and then there's your keyword car stereo so and this is from april of 1999 there's noise killer noise killer was actually owned by a, a third party um later on they uh Joined forces with Larry and um, Scott over at Lightning Audio, and they did uh, their version. There was two two versions of Noise Killer, which was a a spray on uh, deadener for like door panels and stuff like that. And um, we got a lot of returns on those because the sprayer would get clogged. And so when we take them home, I did I did this old shitty car one time. You do you shake it up right there like the shake weight, and then you just drill a hole in the side and let it go for it. So. But that was one way, and then this way was a, a siphon feed for, uh, you know, like a spray gun, compressed air. And then they had a yellow type. And this was also picked up by Rockford for a little bit um, under their connecting punch accessories. So it was, I think it was just a silicone laminate. I think it was the same material that they used to make fishing lures with. Um, and so uh, it was just a silicone, a liquid, some sort of weird silicone that you... You put two pieces of MDF together, and then what happens is it all it does is it doesn't transfer the 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 noise. That's all. It, it's not that it makes it better or tougher or anything like that. It just doesn't transfer the noise all the way through the cabinet. So the idea is that it it uh, it, it eliminates resonance. So, but okay, whatever. You know, again, that build is. Enclosure building has more to do with structural integrity. And when you're making a, uh, especially like a home audio one, what you really want to do is isolate the diaphragm, not necessarily the speaker from the cabinet, but the diaphragm, the, the piston, the cone from the rest of the cabinet. So you want to get that as secure and heavy and as awesome as possible. So, and then the diaphragm is the only thing that moves. So, but anyways, this is through Esoteric USA. This is um after my tech bottom. So... Because my tech owns Streetwires, and they own the uh, the accessories division of Esoteric, 
Um, so they were trying noise killer there. Yeah, by the way, these are all, you know, whatever. Again, they, these were probably, I don't, well, it's MTX. So MTX a lot of times has their own, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, sources for overseas. So, but I would, I would love to pick Larry's brain and find out which were made by him and which, which were not. So, but as you can see here from Richard Clark and David Navone, they say zero noise are 14 de decibels quieter than any other car audio cable we've tested. Well, tested that day, tested that minute, whatever. So, whatever. It's just a fucking twisted pair of copper. If you're lucky. Most of the time, they, they don't even splurge on that. It's from Kenwood. W3. The baddest W3 there is. No peak-to-peak -peak bullshit. It's one way. X Max is one way. Like whatever. That's I, I get tired of telling people about X Max because there's there's linear X Max. There's also X mechanical. I just tell them how tall the coil is. You can you can figure it out. Actually, you can't unless you know the uh, uh, what do you call it? Top plate thickness. But even then, it's like it, there's so many other things that are more you know more relative. That guy. Better, uh, they go into factoring that. So this was a thing for a while. So this one, I guess, uses like a piece of metal to go in there and turn it. So, but this was compression fittings. So you put the wire in and then you mushroom it out and then you put the whole thing in there and then you cross thread it and then it's fucked. So that's typically how those things went. And that's why nobody uses them anymore. So, but like bandpass boxes, they'll probably make a comeback because the young people don't know. And young people are easily fooled. Also, minorities are. Uh, if you ever go into uh, a minority-based neighborhood and start seeing billboards that are in another language or sort, you, sort of, you know, like you would not see that in a white people neighborhood. I, I should say that. Um, that's because typically non-English speakers, minorities... Other uh, classes of people, if you want to divide us in classes, which I don't like to do, but and again, it's not that it, it's not that I, I'm poo pooing anything like classes of people. It's about marketing. These marketers, dude, advertising is expensive and it's a gamble. You don't know how effective it is. That's why that's why Facebook and Google make so much fucking money because you can target your audience. Look at that thing. What is that? Wolfen hug? Is that Wolfen hug? <laughs> Mondo MTX is Mondo 10 inch RFL. That's RF. I didn't know they made an RFL 10. That looks like some, some, what is it called? Uh, yeah, Wolfenhog American hi fi shit right there. So Nakamichi used to be the shit. So advertising is really expensive. So when you spend those advertising dollars, you want to spend them wisely. So you don't want to, you know. Most people don't want soccer moms, me included. Like, what the fuck? Soccer moms can go suck a dick. There you go. See? Now, that was one of the cool things about um, marketing that I learned from Bernie, Bernie Boland of Orion, was there was this shitty, like, just disgusting newspaper that was like 50 cents that you could, uh, that we used, we used to, as skateboarders, we'd pay the 50 cents or just break open the, the little dispenser and then we'd throw all the paper everywhere we're terrible children but um inside there was like hooker ads and stripper ads and and classifieds and stuff like that so you could get laid it was called the beat so but uh bernie boland told me that he used to advertise in the beat and and i laughed at first and he goes dude that's your target market which is horny dudes dudes with lot too much testosterone that want get their you know to do something with it and so the air force is of course doing the same thing they know their market is young men who want to do something with their lives. So they're like, ooh, you can fly a jet. Well, not really. Only like one dude and he already has a degree who gets to fly the jet. So you don't all get to be Maverick. There's got to be a goose. <laughs> and then there's all the dudes that the, the, the arm, it's, there's, there's, there's a whole army of dudes. That's a flight of guys that maintain those fuckers. ADS, I can tell those. Let's see, Dashed Dreams. 
Uh, blah, 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 335PX. Ooh, those are the PX components. What makes them special? Nothing. The crossover. Let's see if they show the crossover. The PX series was all about the crossover. Uh, it doesn't even show the crossover. It shows uh, active. P4100s. I think I got some of those boards out there, too. If you guys want some replacement boards. You got to know what the fuck you're doing. Because when I ship you a board and I test it, and then you go, it doesn't work. I'm like, that means you're dumb. Or you fucked it up. See, you can tell what they're selling here. It's not amplifiers. These are great amplifiers, by the way. If you find these, you pick them up. They're like, some of them are fused for 30 and 40 amps, and you can pick them up for $20. Like, they're fucking great. I'd love to make these as base amps. Cheap base amp, like a single 12. And, you know, like a shitty box that you spray paint. Because they're like, they don't, I don't want gray. So you're like, Psh, now it's black. Presto. Play loud. So I love when snobby guys, trophy winners, trophy collector guys, bitch at me. They go, you don't blah, 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 blah. Because like, I would never do this. I would never put a fucking logo in a trunk. That's a fucking waste of time and money. But, you know, if you don't have any kids you got plenty of time and money to spend, then fucking go for it. Go to the Bolt upholstery shop, because that's the only place you're going to find that does upholstery work like that. It's not on, like, uh, West Coast Customs. So most places don't have that much talent. And West Coast Customs is definitely the uh, exception. So Larry was in charge of that one, too. They came out with some... Uh, Mids and tweeters and woofers and things like that. That was Larry as well. So Larry did that for West Coast Customs. And that was all that was was, um, uh, see, there you go. You want to rape a lady? Smoke. Look, see, this is the wrong color of hand. This is, this is, this is, this is racist. That's what this is. This is trying to say that you can be cool and white and smoke menthols. That is not true. And so don't believe the hype, guys. Only black guys are cool enough to smoke menthols. So. They should really make those illegal. And believe me, I, I used to smoke menthols. And then because I was so cheap, I, uh, I I would buy like the Virginia Slims or the Hundreds because I wanted more bang for my buck. Oh, it's the dumbest thing in the world. I've done plenty of dumb things. Oh, that was the thing last night. Yeah. Uh, so the guy was talking about... Um, I said, well, you put a condom on so that you uh, don't get seeds in your pee hole. And he's like, you sound like a man of experience. I'm like, yes, I am a man of experience. I, I, did, I heard about the fucking of the fruit and the watermelon and stuff like that. And I had a boner so hard, I didn't know that you were supposed to heat up the watermelon. I fucked a cold watermelon. That's how badass I am. Ugh. That was when, yeah, that's the, the best line from Cocoon was when uh, old dude says, uh, I, I woke up so hard a cat couldn't scratch it. Blue steel. <laughs> He's talking about his old penis. It's a good line. That, and that was Richie Cunningham's movie. So there you go. Tube Driver. Signed by Michael Anthony, by the way, of Van Halen fame. And that looks like some diamond, diamond, diamond. So this is the buyer's guide. This was the one to get. I'm not going to go through all this shit because none of this stuff exists anymore. But it was basically telling you everything that everyone has. And then you could, you could, the idea was that I like it when they do the, the, the list. Um, El Chameleon. That was actually a, a pretty good idea from JVC, but it didn't really take off. So, but it was like uh, color LEDs and LCDs before it was there. And see, they're even selling cassette players. Like, we don't need an all-black cassette player. So, and it's all just MSRP. There you go. Detachable face cassette deck. $270. Fuck that. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. Crossfire. They're still around. Rosin. Who the fuck is that? MCM. There we go. It's really the ads. That's what I'm really interested in. So I don't know what even was so like an acronym. Responsible for excessive power output. And then it was called the twister. And it looks like this looks like the same heat sink as the uh, uh, legacy. 
from Pyramid Group. Uh, Legacy was one of my favorite brands, by the way. They made some good shit. I mean, you have to know how to use it. So, more bass. Ugh. Getting a phone call. Like, sorry, I'm making a video right now. Fucking get in line. Signal processors. Let me see. Let me look up one, maybe a good one. Crossfire Hollywood Sound Labs. Nope, 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 nope. Just be cool. Nope. Memphis Macintosh. There you go. So Macintosh four-way electronic crossover. $970. That is crazy. But I'm sure people bought it because they actually brought it back. They actually brought back uh, Macintosh car audio. They're like, you know, there's a there's a whole thing of rich people that just have too much money and not enough. There it is. That's what it was called. Phase audio. So phase audio was the um, what was it? Phase audio was the extension of PPI. Uh, it was sort of an in-between. So it was BK Butler's, I think, I think he was just the attached um, engineer to it. Like he was the idea pitcher, but it wasn't his. So it's probably owned by one of the people from uh, that was in, on the board for ADST, which was the parent company to PPI, ADS, and Orion, and also Apogee. And so this was a um, stupid balance line tube driver, blah, 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 blah. And it, all it did was use XLRs. That was the only thing special. I think it, it might have used like the Tiffany, uh, what is it called? Uh, the Tiffany RCAs or something like that. Maybe. I, I don't think so. So it was great, though. I remember having lunch. at We didn't want to go to the Hard Rock because the Hard Rock was too crowded. So we went to some burger joint across the street in Vegas from the Hard Rock. And I had an amazing lunch with Dan Wiggins and his crew. And uh, he was telling me about uh, putting a balanced um, input on a subwoofer. And I was like, balanced? Really? And he goes, well, he says... Just a little secret. You only hook up one leg. <laughs> Guess what? That's unbalanced. So, yes, you can run a balanced uh, XLR cable, but if only the the common and one leg is hooked up. Guess what? That's unbalanced. But people like to feel important by using an XLR cable as if it's somehow better. So, little things like that. EPX2, which was the Shiznet, and then you could add the module for the E28, which is the 28-band EQ, or you got the 4-band. And then this one also had the option for, of DSP. So I actually owned one for a half a second, but I was just flipping it. And that's when I got to meet one of the big wigs from uh, Rockford Fosgate. And he, I went over to his house, and he had a home theater, which he didn't uh, do laminate uh, layers of uh, drywall. He just did like three layers, made it really heavy. Oh, let's look at the PPI ones. So... Digital analog converter, yeah, you know, dual 20-bit Burr Brown type fucking bullshit. DEQ 230, $700. That's what I should charge. PER 245, great EQ, but not $500 worth of EQ, especially when it costs $15 to make. So everyone needs a six-way crossover. See, and that's why I like the EPX2 from, this was Wayne's, uh, Wheezy's project. So this was the leftovers of the symmetry project that Wayne Harris had put together. And so he ended up doing uh, the EPX2. One of the great things about the EPX2 is, well, it's, it's, it's also kind of its, uh, its uh, Achilles heel, which is that uh, Texas Instruments makes a very tiny analog potentiometer that you can control electronically. And so the whole thing was actually uh, analog. It was not digital. It was digitally controlled analog. And so, but uh, yeah, inside is a bunch of little tiny pots that are all electronically controlled. So Rockstar, that was another brand I really liked. Rockstar was like um, Craig or you know, like Centrex. Centrex was the other one I liked from Korea. Very budget. Um, what was it? Uh, not expensive. Targa was kind of in between. Targa was also owned by the same people that owned um, Urban Audio Works. Those, so those were like sister companies. And that was Soundstore Labs before, I think, uh, Boss Bottom. So I, I, I think, I would love to know the history on that one too. So how long Boss Group has owned Soundstorm Labs, which is SSL and and that kind of stuff. The PX, $4,000. Jesus Christ. 
840.2, Adcom, home audio brand that tried to come into the car audio brands. Again, there wasn't as, as much money back then. Most most people that could afford shit like this was like drug dealers. So, but now, because of all kinds of you know devices, whether it be um, Bitcoin or um, who is it? Oh, junk bonds or whatever, some way to raise money and basically run away with the money. People got lots of money, but it's all, it's all bullshit. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. It's going to crash even harder this time. And they just crash it so that they can cash in because you bet on the crash. And then, um, then you get to, you get to buy your, um, bust a vein. I'm going to bust a vein in your butthole. There you go. Um, then you get to buy up your competition for pennies on the dollar. So, because those are the guys that didn't get cut in and let know that the whole thing is a sham. Uh, I didn't really like this. This is a cast frame. The, the Jensen ones I really liked. The Jensen cast frame. They made a good Class D and some Class AB ones that were really good. That's expensive, dude, to tool up that fucking heat sink like that. Like probably forty, fifty thousand dollars even back then. This is in April of nineteen ninety nine. So. New reality. I don't know what the fuck that is. This gets into the po power amplifiers. There you go. The mats. There it is. Black and white. Monolithic sound. Mobile authority. MTX. Nakamichi. Nexus. Nexus was a... Uh, Nexus was an off-brand. They got shut down by 9-11. They were based out of New York. And they made... Uh, I think I told you guys about this, a little class D that was fused at 120 amps and it was like no bigger than like two of these. This is my diabetic blood testing kit. So it was like a second one out here. And then DD came out with it uh, a couple years later where they just engraved the DD, which again, they stole the DD from, I think, Daredevil. So, which is why they changed their logo. So... The things you learn, phase audio, there we go, phase audio. Yep, TD 2200, 2500 bucks, 2225, same price. More power, less power, same price. The 4100, I got these um, shrouds too, by the way, if you guys want. And even some heat sinks in the end plates, if you guys want to put those together. So, see, missed opportunity, phase audio. You could have put uh, the tube driver stuff in there on this ad, but Phoenix Gold stole it from you with the fan cooled. What are these called? The Xenon Zero Point ZX amplifiers. Phoenix Gold made some cool stuff too. I like the Phoenix Sound Labs or Philips Sound Labs. Kind of expensive there. But it was PSL and then there was another, oh, a special edition. The special edition stuff from PPI as well. Well, not it was that wasn't PPI. Technically, that was um, Dick LeMay and Bernie Bullen's company, which was the amplifier manufacturing company. Planet Audio Big Bang before. Um, uh, the uh, boss bottom out. So the Big Bang, 500 watt model block, $1,200, $1,300. Jesus Christ. Let's skip through a lot of this. There you go. See, the, the ads are really where it's at. Look at that. That's beautiful. Cheaped out on the... I think those are probably output inductors. But Eclipse made so much money from Tilo. There you go. Want to buy steroids? 100% guaranteed results. Made out of 100% horse semen. Oh, yeah, look at those components. Jesus Christ. The PX series, $2,000 a pair. There you go. These subwoofers sucked. They sucked. That's what's great is they make a shitty subwoofer and then they say it's an SQ sound quality woofer when really it's just a weak ass subwoofer. So if you guys have any requests though, let me know. I'll whatever. I'll take a picture of any of the information that you want. I mean, again, this is from 1999, so it's not like you can buy any of this shit anymore. 21, 22 years old. 
Evolve. Oh, LPG, LPG tweeter with Jail's label slapped on top of it. It's it, again. It's not that. It's not that. That's a terrible thing to do. It's just like it's only terrible if you charge too much. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, everybody does that. You know, everybody does it because it's cheap. It's easy to do. You go, oh, how much is it to tool up a grill for a tweeter? Oh, you'll do it for free. Oh, okay. If you buy a thousand pair or whatever. See, somebody's got to make this. So they, you just find the factory that makes it, and then you go, okay, put Mobile Authority on there. That's MA Audio. So because the, the Mobile Authority part was like, looked dumb. So they shortened it to MA Audio, made it hardcore. And again, they were just, he was just uh, importing amps like everybody else. Hollywood Sound Labs. Ed Series Woofers. Cheap. Image Dynamics. There you go. Expensive. They're stupid horns. Again, they were just going to, uh, you know, companies that already make PA stuff. And they're like, can you put a bend in it? Oh, somebody already paid for it? Okay. Just put our, our label on it. Okay. Crystal, same thing. All they did was do... This was probably made by TC Sounds, or at least designed by TC Sounds. Uh, they were out of uh, El Monte, California. So, and of course, that's probably near San Diego, where Tila was. Speakers, I don't see anything any. ESX, that was a brand. Uh, an Alabama corporation. Kicker by Stillwater Designs, right? Whoever Stillwater Designs is, whatever that means. Focal, mobile. Good job. Focal. First place I ask him, who did it? Focal. We win trophies. Do you like trophies? Just go buy a trophy. Just buy the trophy. Oh, there they even got Metasound in here. Eight inch coaxial. I like that. 75 watt, eight inch. Majestic before Marathon. That was another one. Again, these are a lot of these were just me too brands. Now Illusion was interesting too, because that was a local company here in Phoenix. Yep, Tempe right there. Um, and it was probably just down the street. It's probably usually it's like an engineer that left Rockford or something like that. And they're like, fuck it. I can go make my own shit. Or like what happens is they pitch an idea to Rockford and Rockford's like, oh, we'll pass. And so then they're like, okay, I'll go do it myself. And then they go do it themselves. And all they did was put the Neo motor on the front and then, um, they got bought out and, uh, we got a bunch of their crossovers where they used a horn and, uh, what else? I think those were those guys were absorbed by Diamond Audio and Larry. So again, Larry Van Sickle. So because they came out with the V Max, or no S Max sub from Servo Vega, and uh, that's oh, good Lord, Matthew Polk. There he is, Baltimore, Maryland. To install or not to install? That is the question. So I like it when he wears the lab coat. That's funny. So here's what you guys want to see. Carbon fiber NT series. They didn't even use a cast frame. They used a stamped steel frame with that was even the dog ear frame. It wasn't even like a round frame. It was the fucking dog eared one. There you go. $600. And at the time that was insane. Like they're like, nobody will pay $600 for a woofer. Yep, they sure did. And then the XTR, which was a two and a half inch voice coil version, uh, was actually pretty good. And then the Cobalt, which was the shit, which basically the, the, the old Cobalt was the same as the old uh, XTR series, just so you know. Uh, and then the mid bass is XTR6, XTR8. And then they, I don't, they haven't listed here the 8MB. So if you really want to go through Car Audio, um, is looking in the old, it's called Orion, but it's not associated with the brand Orion. It's just an Orion is, you know, Orion's belt. It's a mythology thing. 
And uh, I have some of those as well from 2003 and I think another one in 2007. They were about 50 bucks at the time and it was good. It was, it was what pawn shops used to buy in order to figure out how much things cost. And that was before um, uh, eBay would let you keep track of stuff like that. So... Titanium, mid-range, MW64, that's what we got. Uh, God, I must have got like eight cases of those. And I sold them all on eBay. Philips Car Systems, Philips Car Audio, Philips Sound Labs, Phoenix Gold. More speakers. Polk Audio, Power Acoustic, Precision Power. Uh, there we go. This is the Pro Series. That's the one that Emma Gates had, but I told you those were highly modified. The C2 Series was like the import. They imported that from China. And then they had the in-between, which was made here, but it was like they used a stamp frame, but a flat piston cone. It was like an in-between. Like they used some aspects of some stuff and then some other. This is the modular one. So... There you go. There's the trophy winner. You want Vega? Sir on Vega? There's your shit right there. Skosh, Targa. Renaissance. That was the brother. Or no. No, Renaissance was the marketing for the car audio version of Morel. But there's another one. Uh, another brand that was the brother of the guy that made Morel. And uh, they were made, they're made in Israel, these two Jewish guys. So I remember talking, talking trash. Ooh, wait, the Velodyne. So there it is, the servo subwoofer system. There you go. This thing was such a piece of shit. But you know, they're, they were selling two and three thousand uh, dollar volcano. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Flowers, very affordable, American made shit. You know, because I bought out all their stuff. We'll get some more stuff up here. XTC. Subwoofer for box. I guess they got tired of making baffles. Clifford. I guess they get into security systems. No gives a shit about security systems. There's Avatol. Again, it's all just me too. They just make a, they use the same brain, but then they use a different remote. So then all you got to do is, uh, Diamond Audio on fire. Look at that. 1999. Redefining the art of mobile audio. Yes. By burning all your vendors, all your vendors that worked really hard and you go, fuck you, we're not paying you. There you go, 31 band EQ is only $300. We are coming to an end of this episode of Car, is it Car Stereo Review? It's in the accessories division. That's what was great about Lightning Audio is the other companies tried to get in the accessories business and Lightning Audio succeeded. Like it was like such a standout in the uh, arena. And they were able to have their whole brand based around accessories. It's fucking great. And all they did was like purple and blue and cold blue. You know, they had like themes and things like that. So, but, you know, and that's one of the reasons why Rockford wanted to buy them and then didn't use any of that stuff. All they did was use it as a bitch brand to put it in Fast and Furious and into Walmart. So, but uh, somebody had asked about doing voice coil. I'm not going to bore you with that one because this is available online for free. So just like I said, say that you're a student or whatever, and and they, again they want subscribers. So it's it's uh, go through a little bit. I won't bore you. It's mostly PA stuff, and and uh, it's good for like um, I don't want to say theory, but just like see like modeling. Like they'll they'll show you. Uh, but you can you can um, what was it? You can you, there's a program you can download for free. It was somebody's uh, uh, doctoral. Uh, thesis to come up with that and then it's free so one mag they are giant i actually recommend a couple of other ones if you want to start importing magnets but a lot of times you can just off of ebay you can buy them charged or uncharged um and uh, the neo uh and when my magnetizer is working there's the clipple 
when my magnetizer is working, I'll sell you uh, ferrite if you want audio precision. Solon, Solon, whatever you want to call it. Solon capacitors, resistors. They just look pretty. That's all. Now, what's great about um, is this Po Yun? No, this is SKT. See, the other thing that I like about this is they have acoustic patents. So all they're doing is reviewing the patent. Not that it does anything, but it's just kind of goes over the patents and, and it's a it's an acoustical patent. And you you learn about um, previous products. And because a lot of sometimes the patent, as long as you quote the old patent, you go, okay, this is based on this and it and you're integrating it into something else. But it, it teaches you about that pro process too. Patents are kind of dumb, actually. I agree with uh, Elon Musk on that. And it uh, all it does is... It makes one person valuable instead of bringing value to the whole thing. What is really important is trademark and branding and uh, bringing it first to market and being successful in the market. So this is all the stuff that you can send in. Um, it's not just uh, pro audio, but it can be any stuff. You can send them into Vance and, uh, yep, Vance Dickinson, and he'll test them. Sometimes he'll have uh, Gary over there at, um, it's not Red Mountain. I forget the name of Gary's uh uh, test place over there in East Mesa. So, see, there's Precision Conowind. I don't want to go away. There we go. Uh, and see, they're teamed up with Po Yun. Po Yun is the Chinese uh, extension of Precision Conowind. And a lot of times they use Po Yun when they get uh, overwhelmed. So, and there's also Audio Star, which makes uh, voice coils and all that kind of stuff. So, and then, you know, you go through that stuff. So, but the, the reason why I tell you this is kind of boring because it, number one, it is. And number two, what I do like about it though, is that um, like here in the back, it says industry watch and they'll, they'll, they'll tell you like who's died and who, what they invented and things like that. It's really for the guy that works in the industry and this is your job every day and you kind of want to, you want to have some sort of a community to it. But really the most valuable thing about subscribing to Voice Coil is this, the loudspeaker industry source book. This goes through, and uh, what's funny is both David and I both got in the book, I think mostly to just say we were in the book, um, because when you get these calls from people who, the things they want are just insane and ridiculous, and I'm like, no, you need to go do your homework, bud, you know, or, or give me lots of money, so it's, it's kind of ridiculous, so, but um, yeah, what the fuck is that, so good, good luck on that, so, but yeah. Um, these are, I jizzed on this, I guess. Um, but um, this goes through and tells you that all the, what you know, you can go down as a manufacturer and say, oh, I make this, I make this, I make this. And then they just list you in there. So this is for uh, earphones and headphones. And if you want to get started, um, this is a great way to get started. And another great way is just go on Alibaba and start trying and sampling things. So, but um, what's great about this um, uh, issue is that um, they have pictures like this that show you a lot of examples. But again, this was more valuable before the internet. Now there's a lot of stuff on the internet. So you really want to just um, find a good rep, somebody that speaks uh, pretty good English, or at least can type it and understand what you're looking for and uh, use the rep instead of going factory direct. Because when you go factory direct, typically there's more pressure on them and they want to deal with a big boy. They don't want to deal with your dumb ass that just wants samples. So if you want just samples, get samples off of AliExpress or even Alibaba. Um, and then when you're ready to deal, you know, like let's say a small purchase, like five grand, 10 grand, then you can still go through Alibaba. I wouldn't even start looking at getting around those companies until you do this. And then even this, what's funny is, like even like Peerless, Peerless doesn't really make anything. That's the brand. So and then Timfany is the holding company that owns ScanSpeak, Peerless and a bunch of other brands. So and then they just outsource to China. So and then China outsources to Africa or wherever. Um, Peerless is actually really big in India, again, to take advantage of the um, uneducated masses that will work for super cheap. You know, when you can pay somebody, that's cute. When you can pay somebody um, very little money to do a job that's very valuable that is that's that's what pays for vacations right hernan this is a dispenser company and then right next to ferrotech uh, another phone call go away I'm still making my video not that i try to make these 40 minutes but you know, they end up being 40 minutes so 
But uh, that this is the really th interesting thing that you'll learn a lot about, not just math and science and things like that, but also when you start looking at the bullshit, you're like, okay, this is bullshit. Like if you want to read some bullshit, uh, read Bob Carver's white paper on the Sunfire subwoofer because did Bob Carver invent it? No, Tilo did. Um, and Bob was in charge of the marketing. So that's what Bob is really good at is marketing. Um, that I said, oh, I, I, th I didn't finish the story about Bob Carver, how he got to start. So Bob Carver um, made uh, an amplifier and used a coffee can as the heat sink. So just like a Folgers coffee can, you know, like one gallon worth of coffee and the amplifier sat on the inside. And I think the devices either sat on the outside or were, you know, somehow attached uh, to the, the, the coffee can and, uh, you know, you use mica to isolate it or whatever and insulate it. And um, it performed better than the Macintosh. So that's that's how Bob Carver got started. And so what Bob Carver then did was he took the printout that he got from uh, the Macintosh people. And that's what he used to buy literature. Um, he, well, no, he used it to go get a loan at a bank. And then he took out the loan and bought, spent it on literature. And he got some really fancy literature going and showing how his amplifier beat the Macintosh amp as far as performance wise. It was like basically power versus distortion. That's all. And um, then what he did was he made this nice literature with the loan money. And uh, then he started getting pre-order sales from dealers. He's like, and that's how he started phase linear with other people's money. He just went around saying, look, do you want to carry an amplifier that's better than Macintosh? And proven by science that it is, they go yes. And so then he, then he, then you get use their money. Like I think you had to buy three, two or three at a time, and then like, but you only had to pay for one. So you only had to pay up front for one, but he would lock you in for like two or three or whatever. So, but that's how Bob Carver started phase linear. So, I think that's an interesting part because that shows how much um, foo foo b bullshit that you can use in order to create a product that sells in the marketplace. And again, some of it had to do with timing. Some of it had to do with luck at the, and then they give you everybody's address at the end. So, and that's it. That is it. And then see, look at that. Jansen bringing back our Jensen. Sorry. There's Jansen with an A and then Jensen. One is I think German. And then when the other one is Dutch, I forget which one's which, but uh, yeah, they're bringing back the old school vintage because rich people will pay for dumb vintage stuff so get to know some old people and then get their money from them before they die so i love you guys i will talk to you later um probably this weekend i'll do some real videos i don't really consider these videos but a lot of guys like them so it's not that i'm trying to be popular i just i know what you guys want and you know sometimes you want this whore to put out and i want to put out so um it was funny i was telling somebody the other day about um you know, like in car audio, car audio salespeople are, uh, you know, even a shop is a lot like a, a, a prostitute in that you can be expensive or you can be mean, but you can't be both. <laughs> and car audio places are both. They're expensive and they're mean. So and that's one of the reasons why I started Robot was to, I was like, there's better ways to do this. And so I was like, I'll be cheaper and I'll be nice. So that way I'll have a huge marketing advantage. And uh, then when I was able to really fold it into the goodness that is, you know, Jordan B. Peterson and all that, I, I didn't know about this. I, I just found out about Jordan like a year ago, uh, but I had been doing this stuff and it was just stuff that I felt in my heart that it was like, it doesn't have to be cutthroat. It doesn't have to be mean. It doesn't have to be um, uh, malevolent. Right, is that what it is called? The word malevolent? Malevolent? I don't know. Anyways, uh, it doesn't have to be vicious the way that uh, a lot of people treat it and, uh, you know, where it's dominated by guys with muscles and, uh, you know, macho and all this other bullshit. And most guys are not like that. And so, and again, it's not like most guys are pussies. It's just that you're a guy. Um, you're like a really, really butch lesbian and uh, with a penis, with a, with a very large clit. And so that you have to understand what's biologically who you are. So women are the, are the, are the best humans. They are the XX chromosome. We are the defects. Right. Men are the defects, but they're good workers and they come up with good ideas. They are not the dominant species. Women are. So and there's more of them. So, again, do your biology, do your homework, understand what we are and who we are. 
And uh, that's when you'll see that my screenplay called The Coming Harvest will make so much sense when the aliens come to collect us. So, but I love you guys. <laughs> Take care. Have a great weekend.